welcome everybody. I'm glad there's a good turnout. Uh, my name is uh, Joseph Healy and I'm uh, one of the co-conveners of Green Left. Uh, just to put an electoralist plug in, it's only a week away to the European elections. I'm also a candidate in that election for the London region. Um, Which party for that? <laughs> <laughs> Green Party. Uh, well, we're coming up to the third anniversary of Green Left. Um, a small group of us uh, got together uh, in a village called Headcorn uh, in Kent and we uh, wrote the founding document which was the Headcorn Declaration uh, and that became our founding statement and we then went on um, to adopt first of all the first um, issue, first edition of the Eco-Socialist Manifesto and now we're in the process of uh, adopting the second and uh, so we've been refining uh, the whole concept of eco-socialism and we've been doing that, uh, I mean as the speaker said a minute ago, we are officially all Green Party members but we have been um, deliberately careful to remain outside of the Green Party as such as an independent body so that you know, if, if, if necessary we can speak from outside without instigating any measures or whatever which uh, an internal party group always has to deal with so we don't have to deal with that particular problem so we have ha we have been a thorn in the side to the green party on occasions and long may we continue to do so uh, but one of our other aims is to appeal across the left and to bring people um, from the left as well towards eco-socialism and towards the green party but also to build up uh, fraternal relations with other non-sectarian groups on the left. So as part of that we've been active in uh, the Convention of the Left in Manchester, we've been active in the Left Unity meetings, uh, we've built up quite good relations with Socialist Resistance, who are also an eco-socialist group attached to the Respect Party and various other groups. Um, and uh, there's been a lot of debate recently around the Euro elections, about various groups standing in their manifestos and so on and looking forward to whether we can work um, across the left spectrum after the Euro elections and, and what is the Green Party's position going to be in relation to the development of a new left in Britain. So I think those are all very important issues. Um, we have two main economic uh, thinkers in our group. Um, one is Derek Wall, whose book Babylon and Beyond is um, on sale here tonight. Um, and Derek, we've, uh, we've produced several newsletters and Derek has written several articles in those. And our other main economic thinker Sean Thompson is here tonight to launch his pamphlet and Sean has written um, articles for us as well and has conducted some talks within Green Left um, on the issue of the economic crisis which we're now in the middle of. Um, so Sean's here tonight to launch uh, our first ever Green Left pamphlet, we're hoping it'll be uh, the first in a series called Countering, Countering the Crisis, so over to Sean. Okay, thanks. All right, well, um First of all, I'd like to say thank you very much to Hausmanns for being here. It's lovely, actually, to be in Hausmanns. Um, I, I was just working it out. I, I first came in here 46 years ago um, to, uh, in fact, to uh, pick up copies of Peace News, which was in those days uh, uh, produced just upstairs. Still is. And yeah. Still is. <laughs> and indeed, I can, see, I can see copies of Peace News and copies of Freedom, which actually, by the look of them, could actually be from that period almost. So, um, so, and in those days there was sort of collets, London bookshop collets, Russian and Chinese bookshops, progressive books, all sorts of uh, bookshops around London. And now, uh, you know, as well as Hausmann's and ha now, but Hausmann's still plugging on. So uh, more strength to its elbow and these sort of events are, uh, I think, to, they should be congratulated on. Um, so, why did we uh, why did we decide that we really needed to produce a a, 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 a pamphlet? That we did, why did we decide that this is a that we should this is should be a major issue for us? Well, basically, it's because um, we are uh, at the possibly just at the uh, just at the cusp of what uh, of what the uh, Green New Deal group called a, a, a perfect storm of a, 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 a three uh, a three part um, uh, crisis of uh, greater dimensions than would before. I was, I was actually I just remembered that in, during uh, that I used to be I 
don't know if any of the many of the rest of you were taught by nuns, but I can remember being taught about the the shamrock as being the example of the the, the, the Trinity. Well, now we've got that was the Holy Trinity. We've now got the unholy Trinity of uh, a global financial crisis and recession, um, the um, the slightly delayed but nonetheless oncoming uh, moment of, uh, of peak oil where, where oil production slips over and starts to uh, 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 go down and the ever looming and ever uh, uh, darkening cloud of global warming and cl cl climate change. So the, the fact is that we're now in the middle of a, or just at the beginning, um, unlike, uh, unlike the, uh, the experts who every day, every day on the Today program, somebody or other comes up from the city to say we're probably almost, perhaps just, at, just almost at the end of the worst of the uh, crisis. Uh, and then the next day some figures come out to show that we're uh, that actually things are still getting worse. Um, British GDP has fallen uh, by uh, the greatest amount in the last year uh, since the Great Depression. Uh, and that's been, that's replicated elsewhere. Industrial output in Finland, I mean, we, it's not even worth talking about what's happened in, in Eastern Europe. I mean, the, the, really the whole that virtually the whole of Eastern Europe is now living off a pension from the IMF. Uh, but in Finland, production fell by has fallen by 22% in last year. Last year in uh, in Germany, uh, it's fallen by 23.2%. In in Sweden, 22% 22.9%. Unemployment is rocketing throughout the world. Uh, Spain's unemployment rate at the end of March hit 17.4% uh, with the jobless total in Spain has doubled in the last 12 months. In the USA unemployment went up in March alone by 630,000 and the job rate, the jobless rate uh, went up by 0.4% in a month. Since the recession began in, in December of 2007 5.1 million jobs have been lost in the United States. Uh, so in Britain, the unemployment rate, as you know, is 6.5% and rising. Uh, and uh, despite the fact that we're told, well, no, no, we can expect at any time the rate of, uh, uh, of the, the rate of the increase is likely to level off at any point now, but there's no sign of that happening. Over 2 million work out of work. By early next year, it'll be over 3 million. World trade has nosedived. Um, the uh, world... Well, well, the the um, it's expected to fall by 10% world trade uh, this year, which is the drop, biggest drop since the Second World War. So all the indicators that, uh, of global recession are now at red. My favourite indicator, because it's one of the more obscure ones, is the Baltic Dry Index, um, which is uh, an indicator of uh, of uh, the price of moving raw materials by sea. Uh, that fell from 11,000, almost 12,000 points in May of last year to 1,300 points last month. I mean, something like 90% fall uh, in prices. Uh, on, so, if you need to, if you need to move anything by sea at the moment, it's a very good time to do it. You can get some very uh, competitive prices. And we're now seeing, if you go, if you go on holiday to uh, Devon. Um, this year you'll, you'll, you'll be entertained by the sight of a sort of armada of oil tankers off the coast which are being used to store oil. Uh, it's, now, it's now more economically viable for the oil companies to actually keep, uh, to simply park up oil, oil, oil tankers full of oil rather than, pay the, uh, rather than go through the process of actually uh, taking it to Rotterdam to process. So the IMS Global Stability Report said the banking system has not yet been stabilised, although of course we're told that that should happen any day now. 